and welcome to another episode of More Than Dice. All of my podcast members are on their way back from their potty break slash getting their liquor. And we will be waiting for them to come back because I'm Gonzo. If you're first time listening, uh, that would be a weird thing to not know who I am. Uh, Hi, uh, John. See, there's John. He's coming back. He just came through the door. We can't tell when he comes to the door now because he uh, WD-40 the uh, hinges. And there's Kathy coming back in. So, and John's camera is messed up on my end. Not his end. My end. Let me fix John's camera. Technology. It's a great thing. Oh, Skype work. again? Fucking Skype. No, it's not Skype. It's it's on uh, this end. You sure I can blame Skype? You always blame Skype, though. It's mostly Skype's fault. So. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> So, uh, welcome back to the podcast. We are on episode, what are we on, Kathy? 165? 165, yeah. Okay, John's not my favorite John Ninja anymore. (laughs) Well, Gonzo, it's a harsh fact that we like Captain Mizzy better than you. I'm sorry. I know. That's how it is. I live my life one Captain Mizzy at a time. Uh, there's more than one. Can the world handle more there than one? There is not. Captain there can never be more than one Captain Mizzy. We all know how that story goes. So, um, welcome to the podcast. Let's go and get through our business. We want to thank uh, Creature Caster. We are a creature creator. You will see us paint uh, Creature Caster models from time to time, uh, especially with the newer Judgment stuff coming out. We want to thank Metalhead Minis for, of course, hosting our uh, stuff that we can sell. We do sell dice, widgets, uh, odds and ends. There's plenty of things that we sell that all that money goes right back into the podcast to get new equipment, uh, buy cool things, help us out. Um, we want to thank Tectonic Craft, Tectonic Craft Studios. If you don't know, Dan is now streaming on Twitch uh, doing things. Um, give him a follow if I can get one of my mods to give a shout out to uh, Tectonic Craft Studios. I would appreciate it. Um, also, we want to thank um, Use on Minis. Use on Minis does a lot of hosting for us and helps us push out our podcast, all of our audio stuff, which is we have not only our podcast, uh, I have two RPGs that I play and run in, um, and then we also have two other podcasts, uh, Minority Report, that does uh, talks about War Machine and Hordes, and also um, Through the Void Gate, which talks about uh, Warcaster. Uh, all the time so um, guys if you like it give us a listen we appreciate it um, give us a shout out if you have any questions let us know <laughs> Captain Mizzy thank you Captain Mizzy for putting that out there um, let's go with um, we do have some shout outs this week um, I know I got sent one from Captain Mizzy and I did send it to y'all because I was like oh we need to remember this um, we do have uh, where is it I know Two plus the one Captain Mizzy talked about. I'll be honest, I don't know what Captain Mizzy talked about, and I don't care about one of the others, respectfully. Correct. I agree with you, because I wanted to say something about that. Um, We had, what was it, Uh, Paul Ritter. He he was an actor. Um, It was, it wasn't, I wouldn't say he was really big, but I mean, he did play some roles and, you know, was in stuff. Uh, Harry Potter and a few other things. Uh, And he passed away. Um, and then, of course, uh, Prince Philip passed away, uh, 99 years old. Um, that was uh, pretty long. I, someone had made a stupid comment, and I was like, shut your mouth uh, about him being old. Well, proceed. <laughs> and, of course, uh, DMX, uh, a rapper that passed away recently uh, from a drug overdose, which was kind of sad. Um Okay. Especially because reportedly, despite what anyone might think, DMX is apparently a really good dude. Um, like, tried really hard to keep it real for himself. Did a lot of stuff for his community. Like, there are lots of stories of him just showing up at places near him and just helping out people. You know, um, you know, mopping the floors. He said, "You want you, you know, too big to mop the floors." You know, you got to Yankee. Big- Yankee Papa Bravo says, "New guy here is the flipped camera and inside joke." Yes, it's to torture Captain Mizzy and the rest of us. <laughs> if you would like to see my camera right side up, you can continue. Do you want an 
ants because that's how you get ants. <laughs> you can uh, flip it right side up by uh, donating points to the challenge. And um, if we make the challenge, I get to turn. I have to, I'm forced to turn it right side up for an Get point. to. Yes. Forced to. He's forced to. He'll try I'm to get out of to. it. I don't want to, but I'm forced to. So. Um, don't ban me. Jeez. <laughs> so. Yeah, so DMX, I mean, not everyone's going to like his music or necessarily the movies he was in, even though I found both of them to be perfectly passable action flicks. Um, to talk about Prince Philip, I mean, first off, he's an English royalty, so we pretty far removed for him and from him. Um, so, you know, he's not one of those people I want to say anything unkind about someone who's past, but I don't really, it doesn't mean much to me, unfortunately. It's, he died, lived, he lived a ripe old age, you know, celebrated his life rather than being super sad he passed. And then, you know, another actor dying relatively young, too. What is it with 50s and actors? Yeah. I don't know. But I did see that. So, so, yeah. Because I got, I got woken up uh, from a ding um, uh, from Captain Mizzy sending me, you know, the, the actor. And then I got woken up by a ding from uh, Kathy going, I'm going to proxy with this Spider-Man. Um, and then proceeded to go, wait, they have all these cool things. Can we get on their Patreon so we can get all these models? And I'm like, okay, Kathy, I'll go get on their Patreon. And downloaded all the models and printed everything. I did get... I, I didn't even say that. I just posted a link and was like, look at this cool stuff. And then, you know... I mean, those were separate days. He makes it sound like it was the same day. Oh. But Captain Mizzy told us on Tuesday at but I'll use Guns time. 9.54 a.m. He was awake and, and ready at that point. <laughs> Better been at 9.54 a.m. <laughs> but uh, I did get one of those printed off uh, so we can look at that, too. Um, oh, cool. Uh, if you haven't seen us on the Facebook page or pers my personal page. Uh, right now I'm printing off the Miles Morales Rhino diorama. Um, but then I'll get everybody... Uh, I'll get all the other stuff, which uh, sad to say, uh, Kathy, it's going to be a while for the Witcher stuff. None of it's pre-supported. Oh, so I'll have yeah. to support it all. So you'll get your package God. before that. That's fine. In the meantime, I have plenty of other things to keep me busy with painting. Yeah, because no, no, I was like, I know you're close. almost completed painted everything you have in your possession and commissions. I you're was waiting, waiting for something else to paint because I had nothing around me left. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, not counting like the four or five 3D prints I sent you that were, you know, whatever. Because you got your rock and troll that has the guitar. Um, Not counting, oh. I don't know. <laughs> He's good. She's still got the that I just got. Can't wait one, to see that two, one. Two, three, four other Blackheart models busts that I have to finish in oils. Uh, I still have to finish uh, Cyberdysis in acrylics before I get back to my busts. And. Uh, not counting all the stuff that's in this drawer here that is in various states of uh, being painted. Well, not being painted right now. And I have a <laughs> I have a box over here of miniatures for you also of 3D print stuff. So, you know, you there got is that. no shortage. And of course, Jim is also printing minis. <laughs> so there's you got plenty of stuff to do. Um so let's go ahead and go. Um, John, what are you drinking tonight? Well, I'm drinking a gin and tonic. Which would spark the whole drinking thing with me. Um, yeah. Type like, uh, I said a See, about, I was right. Uh, I was right. I said gin. I said surely not gin. Yeah, because said, last week you were like gin and tonic. Ew. And I was like. Throw in a little grapefruit juice. It's good. And you were like, that does sound good. I didn't get grapefruit juice. I forgot to try it normal now. And if I need to throw in other juices, I will. What, I got three more bottles of tonic gin? water. <laughs> yeah, I let Bainey on. Bainey was helping me on un bag groceries and stuff. So he, uh, he's like, uh, unbag another other bag. He's like, oh, I'll put this in a place of honor for the Kraken. I'm like, oh, wait to see the next bag. Because he hates gin. I'm like, this is going to be great. He looked at it. He's probably, he looks good. He's like, oh. I'm like. What, what kind? Uh, beef eater. 
Okay. That's the one people generally recommend, so I figure I'd go with that as a starter. I like my Bombay Sapphire, but that's just uh, me. <laughs> uh, Which Yankee is what I'm Rock. drinking right now. Oh, or something. Which, Kathy, what are you drinking tonight? Bombay Sapphire Gin with grapefruit juice and tonic water. Oh, shit. Um, for everybody that right, we did, Yankee? We did uh, try and go for uh, a betting poll, which did not work because you have to use lo loyalty points, not channel points. And we're going to we don't do sure. loyalty points. Yep. And uh, that's for high phone trust. But drum roll, John. Uh, I am drinking port. Uh, I'm All right. drinking a yeah. twenty-year tawny port. Uh, Oh, what was it? Uh, Flygate? Yeah, our ass here. Yeah, so. He's drinking a port. Look at the big guy over here. Where's the cigar? I know it's there. Uh, it's actually in my humidor. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it's in my humidor. I'm not going to smoke. I got too much electronic and painting equipment. And uh -huh. Uh, that's so, If someone would have chose port, they would have won and would have got, you know, extra points, but oh well. Um, guys, please be safe out there. Please wear your mask, wash your hands, don't touch your nose, don't touch your face, get your shot, do everything. Get both Good. of your shots, preferably. Yeah, if you got that one, get both of them. You're not really a fan of the one-shotter. It's uh, mathematically not as good as the two-shotters. No. All I know is be safe. We want you to come back. Uh, we want to see people later on in the year, which hopefully Warfare Weekend. Fingers uh, crossed. Honestly, if you don't come back, I still want you to be safe. Correct. That's true. That's true. But we want you we to never come. see you again. We still want you to be safe. Correct. So, from all of us, to all of y'all, cheers. 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 Oh, holy fuck. I haven't had a port in forever. Savor it. Oh, I got a whole bottle. <laughs> this smells very piney, but doesn't taste piney, or doesn't taste what I imagine piney to taste like. It's very neutral, actually. Mm. Fuck, that's good. Sorry. See, I <laughs> like the I like the the juniper flavor of uh, of gin. That's that's something I I actually enjoy about it. Um, I don't want to say I don't enjoy it. I've tasted worse. I can before. imagine. Yeah, I've tasted worse gin. I I've think it would be a lot better with the grapefruit juice, though. I think that sounds like the way forward. It's it's really yummy with grapefruit juice. Or lemonade, maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's good it's with ginger favorite. ale. Possibly even ginger ale and lime. It's, well, there's it, some lime it, in here. But... It works well with citrus. Like, you could do gin and fresca, too. Ugh. But then I have to drink fresca. I'm j I mean, just saying. Just saying. I'm just saying. I have a friend that drinks that and uh, really enjoys oh, it. So I imagine putting fresca in there would probably be okay. Like if you just throw fresca on top of what you got here, it'd probably be fine. But I think honestly, a juice of some variety would be good. I'm not sure orange juice would be good. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I think you'd want something in the lemonade. You wouldn't want pure. You don't want pure like grapefruit juice, or you'd probably want something like lemonade. Something uh, a punchy lemonade, not like one of those subtle ones. One of the ones that's like, I'm lemon, bitch. Yes, yes. Legionnaire says no sound, Gonzo. Wait, this whole time there's been no Gonzo sound? I mean, or no all sound, of a no, sudden? No, no it, it's sound settings. So That's crazy. Let me make sure someone tells me. Make sure my camera is... Oh, sound. only since the camera changed. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, so, okay, so here is the poll, light poll, and then 
spider ham. He is carrying a hot dog, which is partially eaten. I'm sure it'll be hard to see because it's white. Wait, that does sound dog? good, Yankee. Is he spider ham or is he the Flash? It's spider ham. Did you get that joke? It's a, no. it's a Zack Snyder Justice League joke. Yeah. I don't... The, there's a scene that makes it... I hate to say this phrase. There's a scene that makes that sen- make sense. Not well, but it makes sense. So It's, it's Peter Porker. Yep. Spectacular spider ham. I'm with you. Yeah. So, uh, I'll be printing another one because uh, someone else wants one. And I will see if I can try to fix those issues. Right now, I am printing off um, a Miles Morales Rhino Chibi Diorama. And we'll see how that goes. And see if it comes out really well. Um, these are on a Patreon. I, the, I can't remember who it was. Oh, crap. Now I'm going to be busting people on it. Oh. Um, Oh, rats, I don't have it in my tabs anymore. No, nope, neither do I, but hold on. Let me look it up. Because I did also talk to uh, our good friend Yeji over at Snickernack Studios. See if she would like to come on one day and talk about how to paint and talk about chibi stuff one day. She said she would be more than oh, delighted. That would be awesome. Because Yeji's so awesome. She's so fun. Is there anybody I need to talk to about... Um, Chibi stuff. It's definitely her. Uh, Edith Cross 3D uh, is a Patreon yeah. type thing. So um, last week we worked on or whatever on putting frost on my infernal gate. And so a lesson was learned, by the way. You need to make sure. So I put down, of course, the crushed glass snow first. And I did not let that dry. You have to, there can be no wetness on this when you do the Green Stuff World Frost. Um, because I don't know if you can see it really well, but if you see like right in here on the snow, like right here on the snow, and right here, and like right here, and a little bit here, just different areas like right here. The liquid frost, since the snow was still liquidy, it went into it and stayed underneath it and didn't um, frost up. It got absorbed into the crushed glass. Even though that wasn't what you intended from here, the variation between the white and the more translucent stuff looks really interesting. Yeah, Yeah. it doesn't look bad or anything. It was just, it didn't frost up. So I waited until it dried and then put more frost where that happened. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. No, it looks good. I like it. It looks like that smush plus some fresh snow on top of it. I yeah, guess. yeah. So it came out pretty good. Um, the Frost is actually a pretty neat little product. I'm glad I bought two bottles of it. Um, but I haven't found like a, like if you put more on there, it makes big crystals. Or if you put like a, a thin layer, it makes a frosting look. I haven't figured that out. So I don't know if there's a consistency thing. Or whatever or how fast it dries or anything like that so i have no clue um but i started working on some of the more some more models and got a big old hair uh infernal models and of course one of their solos which i started using some of that green stuff world rust pigment that i'm working on um he's got a good dry brush and the colors going on him so i like to work on that but Started working on one of the War Beasts, and um, the skin turned out super, super evil, cool looking. Um, so I'm working on that right now. And that's what we're going to work on. Very magenta. It is. Well, I'm, of course, I'm using that. I the, approve. The magenta <laughs> flow, the fl- magenta fluorescent. Oh, yeah. Because um, what I'm doing is I'm doing, I'll, uh, of course, it's primed white using the clear purple over it as like a wash, letting that dry, then taking the magenta and using it as a wash again, and then dry brushing that purple clear over the top of it. And it's been, it takes a couple of layers, so it gets that cool little red and ready pink inside. 
So yeah, that fluorescent magenta will poke your eyes out with the, the intensity. Yeah, which I actually ordered another bottle, and I accidentally ordered the non-fluorescent one, so I had to order the fluorescent one. I'm sure non-fluorescent will come in handy too. Yeah, I'll just I'll stick it. There's not it was one expensive. I think it was only like twelve bucks for a bottle, so it's not too yeah. bad. So well, I'm going to do same shipping right now for my paints because my local store is open, but their stock is mm, shaky. Yeah, a lot of people's stocks are on everything right now. So what I'm going to do while we're talking is I'm going to, of course, use my coal black uh, from Pro Acryl to paint up the black area and then try to work on the teeth or claws or whatever you want to call these things. Instead of making them black, do like a white and a brown and stuff just to kind of break up the black texture and the black look of it. Because it's, while I love the flat black look, it needs to have something to break up. You know, hey, here's some spikes and claw marks. Well, even with flat black, you don't want it all black. You'd actually rather have it a dark, dark, dark gray where the dark, deeper parts can still be pure black. And you have a little, just enough that your eye can pick up some shading. Yes. And then just in a few areas, you want uh, a lighter gray for highlights. Well, that's the reason why I really like this this coal black. Um, mm. When it dries, it's very matte. So it does give a little bit of highlight. Like right here, there is a very, very, very white highlight um, just from being on so the bottom. You'd, you'd want to hit that with a slightly lighter gray just to... Cause, sure, it looks good up close, but on the battle, if you want to catch that hint of it, you're going to have to put just a little bit there and make it yeah pop. all those all those details will be lost yeah on the tabletop so we're gonna yeah i used to paint flat color on everything and be like put the light and then you know it's going to give it the highlight and it does sure when i'm looking at it but when you're looking at it across the table not so much the thing is with with scale and light sure you're going to get shadow and reflection because you know light but it's going to be the wrong scale. As weird as that sounds, like just mm -hmm. our regular light that makes shadows and highlights on our 1-1 one, one scale life uh, doesn't work the same way at, at a, such a tiny, tiny scale. So you have to enhance and exaggerate all of your contrast, all of your lights and darks. Yeah, well, well, something like that, about... I probably... Oh, go ahead. I was, I was say, it was something like we were talking like last week was, uh, you know, painting your own basing. Uh, yeah. Just well, putting just the single same, rock exactly. without the rocks, just not, not painted, they look weird. Yeah, exactly. It's the same sort of thing. Uh, or something like that, I, I'd actually even like to, instead of do, having done it like that, having done it in a dark gray, maybe a medium dark gray, and then just going over it with Black Templar, the contrast paint just to see what that does. I want to do that at least once just to see what kind of uh, texture it gives. Yeah, even, gonna... Not even that dark of a gray because that, that contrast black will, will tint it a little darker anyways. You so want to go it wouldn't even dark, have though? to be... I don't know what color of a dark gray that is. I don't know how dark that well, is. Well, let me say, I do my bases with uh, the other one, Mechanicus Standard Gray from Games Workshop, and when I put the, uh, the even the, uh, the gray wash over it, it deepens it up, but not the full black by any stretch. Okay. So you, you, you want to be careful. You'd want to test on something first, just sort of see how it looks. Um, but that's sort of the key of it all. Or paint a model in it. Like, there was a... Uh, a meme uh, of sorts that got passed around on Facebook about, uh, you know, what was it? Uh, basically pottery students. You know, they said one half of the class we judge purely on quantity. The other half we judged on qua on quality. And even at the end, the half that was doing quantity ended up producing better than the quality half because they were in there making all the stuff and making the mistakes and fixing it. The same thing that happened with paint. I mean, that's why you really want to start with a unit of troopers paint them up and then go graduate to a vehicle or a hero because you learn a bunch about your paint scheme on them then you graduate to the hero and you're applying what you've learned yeah i always 
I always am, am telling people, you know, or joking with them rather, like when they say they, they're just finishing uh, a unit of 10 guys. And I'm like, and now that you're on your last guy, you finally figured it out. You finally mm-hmm. figured out what you wanted to do on your last guy. Your first nine were just practice leading mm-hmm. up to the tenth one. Mm-hmm. But at least now you have a better idea when you when you are painting your your heroes for well, your army. That's when I'd go to squad number two. Like I got a second squad. I'm gonna skip the hero for a second. I'm gonna go to squad number two because yeah. now I know. But yeah, absolutely painting more means you're you're learning more Mm -hmm. the more and the more frequently you paint the more the things you learn are going to stick in your head Mm -hmm. if you paint once a month uh anything you learn in that one session you you may not remember it the next time you pick up the brush you may have forgotten it but you're more likely to remember it if you're painting for a half an hour one day and then you're just painting for a half an hour the next day and the next day, like what you're doing. Yeah. That's Man, that's the way you that. you develop that sort of muscle memory and that's the way you kinda you start getting that eyeball for for mixing colors or for what color combinations you like that work well together. Yeah. It's a little weird right now painting Marvel models. I don't get that as much because I'm doing what their costumes are for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. There's no I look for alternate color schemes. I'm like, I'm looking. And sometimes you win, and sometimes you're like, nah, it's just not going to work. Even then, you're like, well, what red should I use for the red on Spider-Man? What's going to be the closest red? And if you do shading and highlighting, you want to you wanna know what works for me for when I want a darker shade, what works for me when I want to highlight red. Because or I've learned that to an extent, with models, if you're gonna, if you know you're gonna wash the hell out of a model, the base color matters a little bit less than you think. Like I'm like Spider-Man. Well, I know I'm gonna wash him, and and all this. So let's just use red. Vallejo has a color called red, and I'm like, I'm just gonna use red. <laughs> when you wash it, and then you do maybe do a little highlight, you find boom, you're good. Because yeah, Reaper has just, clear red. Clear red is pretty much just it's it's artist acrylic uh, style cadmium red, and I know for some people that's meaningless, but oftentimes when you're looking at miniature paint, the paint is a blend of a pigment like red mixed with a little bit of white or a little bit of black or both, and maybe even other colors. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of miniature paint people say, well, the colors aren't as vivid. They're a little dull, a little muted. Like all the privateer press reds I was disappointed with because they didn't punch you. They were all a little muted. They were a little dull. I've always felt that way about Games Workshop reds too, except for ruby red way back in the day. Blood red was was bright enough for me. Yeah, but it's very Yeah, I would have liked more orangey red colors, and they didn't have those. I definitely like this fluorescent. Um, I had picked these up a long time ago, but I didn't find anything to use them on until pretty much now. Because, I mean, I've used them on for fire, the, you know, like the fluorescent yellow and orange. But, or fluorescent yellow, I should say, because we had talked about using it for, you know, fire. But I haven't used it for anything else. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make this demon skin, you know, look. I love the fluorescent magenta for like magical purple fire too. Yep, I can see that. It's great for that. And it's really nice and thin too. So when you put it over, you know, it it really is transparent enough when you use it over white, you can really blend with it really nice, which I thought was really fun. And wow, that that magenta purpley skin really stands out when you start painting the other parts of it black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it really goes. That's fucking creepy. I well, think any dark, color any... Would, dark brown would be good too. Yeah. Any darker color. You wouldn't want a bone. I think bone would be wrong. 
So I wanted the black plating because I was just like, eh, it looks cool. Black and black is good fun covering color. And I wanted it, you know, menacing looking. Um, but I wanted the pop. I always paint something that's pop of color and I like. And the purple, whenever I was testing that purple out on uh, Omadamus or whatever, how you pronounce his name. And I was like, ooh, I think I can push this up on the gate. Because, you know, the gate has a, that fleshy look on it. I was like, yeah, let's go with the, as my demon skin for all the infernal models. The, the, That's the going to be fun to see, to see all those out there on the table. Yeah, that would be pretty neat. And then doing purple as the, uh, a light pinky purple for like the ruins and hiding underneath the armor and, you know, magic glow, I guess you want to call it. Magic like, glow. The magic glow on him. You know, on the logo of the sword is going to be the pinky purples. Does he got the glow? He's got the glow. He's not the last <laughs> dragon, though. I'm thinking now of that wonderful, wonderful soundtrack to The Last Dragon. Oh, yeah. So good. Uh, hi, Ash, the serial hobbyist. Hey, Ash. So, but well, I mean, whoever comes in is a uh, one of your watch, one of your viewers, Kathy. What's that? Usually, when I see someone like that, I assume it's one of your viewers just popping in on Sunday. See what's going down. <laughs> like, yes, yeah, and I can see lightning and I can hear the thunder. You don't need to tell me. I have a window. Thunder. I can see it. What? You have a window? I thought you were like a storm. housed in a basement. No, no, he lives in the basement. Oh, okay. So he wanted to make sure that it was real because he doesn't know yet because he's sheltered and chained up in the basement. <laughs> wow, that got really awkward kind of quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he, he's he's free to come and go as he pleases. Oh. I mean, technically speaking, it's his house. <laughs> That's true. If he wants to be chained up in the basement, that's, you know, we're not here to judge. No, I mean, <laughs> like we are, absolutely. But, oh, you're grinding MechWare? Yeah, he's, he's grinding MechWare online for the uh, free Mac, which is, uh, they're doing a good job. It, it's a really good Mac. I'm not grinding because I already own one. But is it fun, Beanie on? Are you having fun with it? Probably depends on the games are this morning. Not so much. Ask, uh, ask, uh, Legionnaires. He was watching this morning as so I was getting my butt whooped repeatedly. Repeatedly. Which, I if you like, Valheim, you're online, you speaking could... of video games, etc., I played Valheim for like nine hours yesterday. The time just got away from me. That yeah. Happens. What happens when you play survival games? Oh, uh, yesterday I don't know what happened at the time. It was just like suddenly I even got done with lunch early, and then suddenly it's like, oh look, here's Furk asking me to play a game, and it's like oh, 9:30. What the fuck happened? My my friend that I'm playing with was like, it's like midnight where I live, so yeah, I should probably Bye. go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Hey, Chuck the Painter. Wait, this is a cult. No black Nikes, castration. No, we don't. No, of course we don't do that. We would never wear Nikes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that that's the ending point for her. The rest of that's all fine. The Nikes, no way. <laughs> I mean, you're going to throw that out there. Ash says, man, people just overtook our Valheim server and just stopped playing. Now my husband and I are playing Stonehearth and really loving it. I'm glad you found another. See, I feel like that happened with a friend of mine's server. He invited a few other people to play on his server, and they were much more aggressive at gaming and yeah, they just kind of took it over and shot ahead, and and I, yeah, it it 
it's no fun when you're in a server where there's other people that are far outpacing you because they're playing. Like, my nine hours didn't yesterday. I hardly played at all during the week. That, so, so that was my my one chance to to really get in and play and and do something. And the person I was playing with is not as far as a lot of people I know, but he's like twice as far as I am, as far as as you know the days in Valheim and uh, technology and stuff. But hey, I now have boars in a pen, and they're tame, and they make little piglets. And I can them. pet them, and, and they, they tell me that they love me. So. You don't eat them? Well, I could. Okay. <laughs> I could jump in and kill them and eat them. Just... I'm just happy to have them and have them be tame at this point. <laughs> that reminds me of the... Uh... Halfling's dog mount he bought. He was he couldn't think of a name, so we named him ER. He's like, oh, I like that, ER. And then eventually it came out what ER stands for. Emergency rations. Aww. Look, sometimes you got to be pragmatic about it. Well, that is true. I mean, heck, and when I played uh, Scavies for uh, uh, Necromunda, I always had a guy with no skills who was named Emergency Burrito. <laughs> because this guy, he's like, look at all this money it would cost to to feed my dudes. Nah, nah, get put an emergency burrito in the pot. We'll eat him instead. Fuck it. And then you fed your whole thing, and you made lots of money, and it was good. Ash says that's what happened. We let a few friends in, and they invited more people. Oh. That seems rude. The whole village area was just reconstructed. That. Yeah, that would frustrate the hell out of me. I feel you. Yeah, that does seem a little. That's rude. Rough. That's that you don't you don't invite strangers to someone else's server, you unless they specifically first. say, "Yeah, invite whoever you want. I don't care." Look, Ninja told me I can invite everyone to whoever he wanted to his Discord. I still ask permission. Yeah, yeah. That's how you do. Just want to make sure. Yeah. I do like the way that's looking, Gun, so. Yeah. I don't know yeah. that I've chosen black, but I think it's not a bad choice at all. I think it's pretty good. It makes it look well, really creepy. And he's not done yet. So, you know, plenty of time for highlighting and, and whatnot. The Viking gentrification. <laughs> <laughs> Ash says, what's good about Stonehearts is that only three players can be on the server total, so we don't feel bad when we say, we can't invite anyone else, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't feel bad anyway. <laughs> That's valid. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't feel bad either, but I do understand that, you know, sometimes... I actually bought a new video game. What? You? Yeah. The hell? Wait, 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 someone, Banyan, go check see if he's got a fever. I want to know what it is. It's the uh, <laughs> the turn-based game from Hairbrain Studios. What was it it was on sale. Someone met, someone linked it on uh, Twitter. I'm like, all right, I'll buy that. Seems what was the game? Play. Why don't I just play on BattleTech? That's oh, like yeah. Big advanced, yeah. Apparently, it's got a uh, ton of modding and all, so you can do a lot of stuff. So. That might be good for when I'm not really feeling the MechWarrior online. There are certain times of night where it is not conducive to dropping a MechWarrior online because the tryhards are out. And they try hard. They try extra hard. Yeah. Yeah, I think I picked that up a while back, too, uh, when it was on sale. Yeah, it seems cool. Hey, MechWarrior, MechWarrior. I still have Borderlands 3 I can try and win, and... Uh, the Borderlands uh, Telltale game. Well, that, talking about Mech Warrior online, I did get a copy of Clan Invasion. Oh, uh, that it's not really Mech Warrior online, but I gotcha. Well, just Mech Warrior, but still. Look, I hey, know. Lol, man. How are Battle you? Tech. Welcome. 
Um, I got a copy of the Clan Invasion box set. I was able to find one. And I also got a copy of the Inner Sphere models that just came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, the new ones, yeah. The other thing about that Battletech box you were looking at, the, uh, the core rules, is that, sure, it's got a bunch of models in it, and they're solid, but the new ones are so much better. Yeah. Well, I was just sitting there because it was, it is really, really, really hard for people to get the um, Clan Invasion right now. And so I was like, oh, I have this one right here. And it was there. And I was like, oh, maybe, let me call John. And I messaged you and asked you about it. And then that's when I was able to go, okay, I can hold off and get that one. All right, so I got that. Let's do. Some... Ash has a new board game that has customizable mechs. What? What is it? What is it? What yeah. game is it? Oh, we'll unwrap on stream at some point. Uh huh. Oh. Would revealing what game it is be a spoiler? Oh, Galaxy Hunters. I don't know. With mechs, customizable mechs. That's cool. That sounds really cool. Let's get this magenta fluorescent going. Ooh, I need to take a drink. Why isn't anybody telling me to take a drink? Uh, take a drink there, Gonzo. I don't understand how you would forget, but... Because yeah. I'm concentrated on my painting. That's good. Yeah, that's a good point. I get all into it. And then I just totally lose track. And Ash has contributed 250 channel points to Hydrate John. <laughs> Why do you all hate me? It's okay. What did I do? It's okay. It's still a long way from happening. It's not going to be tonight. I'm never right. If I completed it tonight, I would uh, not drink any alcohol for my Battletech stream tomorrow. Uh, spoiler, I usually don't drink. I don't need to make myself that much worse. <laughs> it's kind of hit or miss to begin with. Let's not try and make it worse. There's a level. Like, if you can get to the level, there's a level I get to in the zone where I'm just at the right spot. But that doesn't happen too much. So, you know, got to be careful. You know, we should probably do a... Uh... Gundam episode pretty soon because I still have to work on my Gundams and I know Kathy has a Gundam she has to work I do on, have I a Gundam uh, Nessie Nose sent me a Gundam and I was just thinking about that yesterday I'm like I need to I need to do a so we could do one with our cameras side by side side, and, uh, side. yeah and, and putting yeah. our Gundams together well I've got like three <laughs> that I need to put together Maybe do a poll of which ones I should put together on stream. Sorry, I got went into side by side from. Uh, yeah. <laughs> should not be surprised. Uh, Ash, so uh, the channel challenges are: uh, when you get read a chapter for Kathy, she will read a chapter from uh, At the Mountains of Madness. Uh, when you get Gonzo stop being weird, he will turn his camera right set up for an entire episode, and. It'll never happen, but sh but theoretically, hydrate John would mean I drink nothing but water for an entire episode, which is a fate worse than death. <laughs> I mean, just currently in life. Like, there are some episodes where you're like, oh, yeah, that's fine, uh, right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> life requires alcohol right at this moment. <laughs> yeah, read a chapter is, once that goal is met, I stop whatever I'm doing. And read a chapter. We're on. Are we on chapter five now? Oh. Yep. Chapter that, five of At the Mountains of Madness. Uh, for the rest of them, Hail Hydrate makes us all drink. Posture check makes us all stop slouching and, and, and straighten up. Stretch is a stretch arms log for Kathy. That makes me stretch. And then Transformers makes me transform something. What I transform will depend on what we're doing at the time. We're lacking I, a 1K for Kathy now. 
I guess we'll have to come up with something. Well, I think that's because stretch is lower than 1K. Yeah. yeah it's 250. 250! I'm okay with that because I like stretching. Less than 350. It's like yoga, sort of. Yeah. yeah it's a... <laughs> I have friends who have this habit of trying to make me transform mechs in the middle of a battle tech thing. So I have a box called the Ferk box because Ferk does that. And <laughs> why do you hate me? What did I do to you? Why must it be this way? Uh, anyways, the Ferk box, which is full of the easy to transform transformers because I'm trying to play a game, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, at least you're spreading it around equally, so I'll call that fair. That is fair, yes. The fur, yeah, because fur has this habit of doing it right when I'm trying to drop or something. I need to get something <laughs> to transform. Uh, Monday hey, nights is painting night. Uh, one of my painting nights, so I, I don't get to, I don't get to come on. I suppose I could lurk. All right. I have you on as a voice in my head. Oh, Diamond Dallas Page Yoga. <laughs> I know Diamond Dallas Page. I know. Old I have no right. idea. Is it played by old Diamond Page? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm interesting. I do love old wrestlers for the most part. That sounds interesting, though. Hey, Avian Thulium. welcome. I mean, Thank you most, for most. those channel points. Mostly welcome. Legionnaire says I've had some friends swear by it. Uh, I. I love the Iron Sheik on Twitter. He's a he's a hoot. Oh jeez, I haven't he, heard that name in forever. Because he keeps up his uh, uh, rivalry with Hulk Hogan, which is funny. Is he really? That's, ah, that's awesome. Yeah, he, he's pretty fun. I mean, a lot of those guys. I mean, they're old enough they can't really wrestle anymore. But I love how they've embraced their persona and just they're just so positive. Though I mean, because Iron Sheik was not necessarily a positive wrestler, but he's so positive aside from. Oh, I don't Hogan all the time. It's great. Uh -huh. His character is his normal character, but as a person, whoever's running it is actually very yeah, I, and fun. Yeah. So many of those wrestlers, like I have heard very few stories of really shitty wrestlers. Most of those people knew it and just and loved the fans because they knew it relied on the fans. Well, go into that uh, thing because, I mean, there is a persona and a character, so on and so forth, of these people. Which goes back that people are still giving death threats to, um, I can't remember the guy's first name, right, Russell. Russell. Yeah, that's playing Agent people. or Captain America. Stop threatening Kurt Russell's son. It's yeah. a character, and he's playing it well. He's playing it really I'm well, too. Playing. He is fucking nailing it. Yeah, he is. Which this week's episode, we'll discuss on the spoiler-free uh during the media section, but uh, yeah, I saw that there people are still get harassing him, and I'm like, why? If you're pissed off at him, then he's doing it's his like job Joffrey. right. It's like, it's like Joffrey. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what. If if I ever met the now I think adult who played Joffrey, I'd buy him a beer. He did a good. I didn't watch a lot of uh, uh, or much any Game of Thrones, but the scenes I've seen with him in it, he played. Like, legit fucking awesome acting. Fantastic yeah. bad guy. You, you know, ha, ha, I don't even watch your stuff. And I this the clips I've seen in Living in the World. You did a great job. Have a beer. You are, you were a dick. You did a great. Awesome. <laughs> awesome job. You were a dick. It is amazing uh, that there are people that cannot separate the actor from their work. I don't get. I don't understand that. Never had. Yeah, I have never understood that. No, especially maybe, someone. Maybe, maybe when I was a kid, but at the same time, when I was a kid, I thought cartoons were actually real. So. <laughs> but yeah, these are adults that are doing this, and I'm like, oh, really, people? Yeah, and I, I think the reason is is because he hasn't. This is his first real big role, and since he's an unknown coming in, they're like, rrr, 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 rrr. like, calm down, fuckers. Like, I legitimately say, I mean, I love Falcon Winter Soldier, and I think all the main actors are fucking nailing it. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
Baron Zemo is so fucking good in this, too. <laughs> we're talking at... So I don't know how much you guys know comics, but we were talking at uh, lunch yesterday, and they need to do a Thunderbolts, a Thunderbolts TV show. Like, arrange a whole thing, have all the heroes disappear, and ha a lot of them come out, and then bo do, boom... You know, Citizen V, a.k.a. Zemo, comes out with his evil plan or whatever, and he'd be so good in it. Like, despite everything, I still trust him more than I trust Captain Dushmerica. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That is a great job on both parts of that. Yeah. Because it shouldn't happen. I know Zemo's only out for one thing, and I know Captain Dushmerica's trying to do the right thing, but somehow... If you said you can trust me or him, I'm like, I'm with Zemo. I'm sorry. Fuck you, man. Yeah. I'd be with Zemo right now over the new cap. Huh. Yeah. So good. But yeah. So there's that. I mean, so that's a highlight of my week. Well, we're that. close to the media section anyways, so. Well, we're going to be sort of freeforming it anyways. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this one was supposed to be. Just we chill out, we paint. I I have to say, Kathy, the, uh, it gets a little better as it's watered down a little bit. It dilutes the uh, intensity of the flavor. It's, it's, it's not bad. I definitely think it needs something else in it. but Yeah. I'm, I'm really liking it with a, a little, just a splash of grapefruit juice just to flavor it. More importantly, I'm glad I noticed that the original uh, batch of tonic water I grabbed was the zero sugar version because that would have distracted me through the entirety because I can taste that shit in anything. <gasps> it don't matter how much alcohol you put in, I can fucking tell. And that uh -huh. scares me a little. And I don't even drink a lot of... I can't drink too sugary of stuff anymore just because cutting out snacks means I'm cutting out a lot of sugar. So, like, there are certain things. I'm just like, no, I, I, I got a wild cherry Pepsi from Taco Bell and I was like, holy shit, I don't... I don't think I can do this again. <laughs> oh, three and a half months, they finally sent your local game store co your copy of Morgox Crushers. Jesus Christ. Three and a half months. GW, unfortunately, is still the big dog. It's unfortunate because, man, they are, like, listening to uh, or listen, reading what uh, Jay from Discount Games Inc. has to go through sometimes. Fucking stupid. And... The guy at uh, Mini Stomp, who I'm theoretically getting my Cursed City through, because he does a lot of uh, stuff like that. That's the stuff they have to go through to get stuff, because GW are assholes. I mean, I'd say that bluntly. GW had a lawsuit put on them years ago because they tried to cut out distributors entirely. Now they're doing it in any way they can to try and get distributors cut out. They, don't want, they want you to buy it directly from them. They don't want you to buy it from anyone else. They don't care what they have to do to do that. They'll literally burn the fields to try and get a little more going to their stores. And that's not great business. Eventually, they should stop, hopefully. Or eventually, maybe they... The hmm. problem is they're also putting out such good models and stuff. It's You can't stop them. Like, yeah, you're assholes, but man, that's some good shit. You know, you, you kind of wish they'd shit the bed on something so you can break their hold, but... Uh, so, Legionnaires, the funny thing is the Better Business Bureau doesn't have a lot of power. They Distributors are still allowed to buy stuff. They're fulfilling their legal obligation to have distributors fill it. Uh, doesn't mean they got to give you a lot. It's really shitty. And they do some shitty business practices, which makes me glad I don't work for them anymore. I'd hate to be on the customer service line and have to answer that shit. Because you know I'd get the calls. We get all the calls. I used to be a time when I wouldn't, when I regretted not working for him anymore. You know, I wish I could have moved to Memphis and all that. Especially now that I'm divorced, that was one of the big things keeping me here. But man, now I'm glad because I wouldn't want to have to deal with that. Not as shitty as what well, other Yeah, you, those both those are big dogs doing equally shitty things. I mean, Wizards of the Coast at least trying some things. They, I don't know. Aren't they part of Hasbro now? Yes, but they're sort of semi-autonomous. Because Hasbro will shut down anything that affects money. And Hasbro's not exactly a great company either. Literally, I ordered uh, this guy. Grim Grimlock. He sold out twice. And then finally they had one that lasted long enough for me to get home to order it. And so they sent it. They sent a tracking. 
And then suddenly my tracking hadn't been updated. I'm like, hey, uh, my tracking has been updated in like three days. It was supposed to be here already. So I sent him an email. Five days after I sent the email, I got him. Seven days after that, they responded to my email. As a customer service manager, I would fucking fire somebody. Literally, at that point, no, no, just don't respond. You, you shit the bed already. Don't respond. Look up their tracking. If it's there, leave it alone. You're going to piss them off more by responding. But no. Oh, no. Oh, no. They responded. And so I responded to them. How would, they, they sent a customer service survey. That's a mistake. Like, oh, well, how did you do? Let me tell you how you did. Uh, yeah, I spent about 20 minutes on that particular uh, survey because don't give me shitty customer service. I will destroy you for it. Yeah, Chuck, I'm glad that GW's those amazing customer service. We worked hard to build it to be that. Literally, it was hard work. A lot of I can tell you a lot about talking to good good hobbyists who just needed some help as someone to listen to them. And sometimes their local store wouldn't. Busy, sure, I'm sure they're really busy, especially because that was the time they were starting to reduce the staff and all. But they always had someone to listen to. Listen to them. So that part I miss. I miss pure customer service, and GW was pure customer service because literally their tenants were just. Make the customer happy. Wow, everything's fucked up on this screen, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. <laughs> so you guys didn't expect a customer service rant from John tonight. Oh, sorry, it's one of those things I'm passionate about. And Gonzo, you're back up. Echo, echo, echo. Echo, echo, echo. They're not talking about the dolphin. How about now? I don't know. Uh, but I have, I have to, to redo some gonna... screens, some scenes, and take out some stuff. What? Type thing. Uh, thank you, Legionnaires. Oh, 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 oh. So, John disappeared. Kathy, you still there? All right, everybody. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Okay. Gonna reset my. And reset my camera. What? Anybody in the chat watch anything good this week? Anybody in the chat have any suggestions of a movie that John and Gonzo and I should all watch so that we can talk about it on the podcast? Because the last ones we did were hilarious. I mean, it was really fun to watch movies that I had never heard of and Oh, dumb, stupid, and enjoyable is what we live for, Avian. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old. Oh, uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Kung Fu Hustle. I've done that enough. I haven't seen that in forever. Is that, uh, that's on Netflix now, too, isn't it? Avian, you missed it. We did uh, Godzilla, Godzilla versus King Kong last week. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we did it. Yeah. yeah, we did, like... Yeah, we didn't do Godzilla vs. Kong yet, because I haven't seen it. Oh, I thought we did. I think nope. I did, and I said... No, you guys it. watched the trailer for it. Yeah, yeah I, I think did... we stopped before you got there, so... Okay. I'll have to try and get a chance to see it. I've heard good things about Lupin. Lupin. I don't know what the way of the house husband is, but... Yeah, I've heard good things about Lupin. That's on my watch list now. Yeah, I actually list was too. reading some of the old, because it's an old French uh, series, like a book series. Uh, I could actually read some of that out loud someday on my Friday Pulp Fiction stream. But they made it into a TV series, and I'm excited to watch it at some point here. Uh, Ninja, I have not heard of uh, Mr. Roberts, but I see it here. It looks interesting. 1955, I mean, Henry Fonda and James Cagney, Jack Lemmon. Sounds like a winner to me. Ooh. Ooh. Sounds like a winner. Mr. Roberts. Is it uh, streaming somewhere, Ninja? It's always helpful if it's something that's on Netflix or Amazon Prime for free because I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I yeah, mean, I a... will rent something if I have to, but I'm cheap. Kathy, I'm so unhappy that you don't have Paramount Plus. Same, you know why? 
I'm unhappy really... that I don't have BritBox and MHC Choice so that I can't watch my British shows and my other international TV shows. Because uh, apparently Paramount's got the Jackie Chan license. <gasps> so, like, tons of old Jackie Chan movies. I like Jackie Chan. I want to watch right. Jackie Chan. Um, might be able to help you. Hit me up afterwards. Okay. Event Horizon. Wow, Event Horizon. I saw that in the theater. I haven't yeah, seen right. it since then. Yankee Papa Bravo, I got something for you. You you brought this upon yourself and everyone. But when I hear Event Horizon, I have to share something. So <laughs> It is glorious and terrible in equal measure. So, pause. Don't start playing it yet. I'm going to send you all a link. Watch it, love it at some point. Just save it for after the show. And then uh, message us and tell us what you think of it. Okay. But there you go. Uh, I watched three things. I mean, only one of them's new, but three things. Um, I have one, two, three, and Godzilla versus King Kong. I mean, you might want to save Godzilla vs. Kong. I ain't seen it yet. Okay, we'll save that one then. Kathy, what do you got? I watched James Bond today. <laughs> For those that don't know, I have been working my way chronologically through all of James Bond. And today was the beginning of Daniel Craig. <laughs> it's, you know what, this this Casino Royale is like the origin story for James Bond. Yep, sort of modern origin. And and I love it. I love it. I mean, if you can separate the the fact that some of them take place in the nineteen, you know, sixties, like I mean, when it first came out, obviously, yeah. But if you can separate yourself from the the period in which it was filmed, then yeah. I mean, it's it's an origin story for James Bond. And, oh, my God, what a ride. It starts out amazing. I love that it starts out black and white. At first, I was like, did I select the wrong movie? <laughs> I'm like, because the MGM logo and everything's in black and white. I'm like, am I watching the right thing? <laughs> but I recognize that British actor. I don't remember his name uh, right away, who's at the very beginning and then uh and he's talking to somebody and then you see that it's daniel craig and man he is just ice cold he is the ice cold james bond and i love his james bond it's not the no it's not the david niven casino royale but that's on her list that is on my list i love that one I, i i remember watching that with my dad when i was a kid um Yankee Papa, I would agree that the Daniel Craig, Daniel Craig James Bonds are generally missing something, but I say that's a tonal shift that they have intentionally done, because even you know Pierce Brosnan kept it somewhat humorous at points. Yeah, this one's every... very, the humor's way too British and deadpan. Every one of the well, I like British deadpan humor, so, so I'm okay with that. However. Every single James Bond, every single actor brought something different to James Bond. Everyone uh, had a little bit of a different feel to it. You know, like like from the Sean Connery to the George Lazenby single one to Roger Moore. I mean, I was less of a fan of Roger Moore because I felt like it was a little too silly. Yeah, it was a touch too much. Uh, but then we went to they, they, Timothy Dalton, and and that was way more serious. Oh yeah, that was more serious but, in the vein of of Daniel Craig. But yeah. still had that humor. He still had those those Bond quips. Yeah, uh, I liked this one as an action movie, and I I felt like that's kind of what James Bond should be. Whether whether there's you know, silly quips. And I enjoy the silly quips. I adored it after Timothy Dalton when I got to watch Pierce Brosnan and they brought back some of that, like the really cheesy innuendos. Well, those are hilarious to me, but I can watch a James Bond without those. You, you know what happened between all of that that made them stop? Austin Powers. 
Uh, Austin yeah, yeah. Powers stopped the any sort of fun humor in James Bond because they're like, oh, they're 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 taking yeah, a now it's yeah, now so, it's comedy. Now it's yeah, they're comedy, and now it's like we're. I mean, I love that Kingsman, the Teen Kingsman series, showed you can still do that and not feel like you're a pastiche of it. You can be a semi-serious movie and still do that. And I think uh, with their next actor, I think that the Bond franchise needs to catch up. We don't all want it to be Bond equals Bourne, just in fact he's British. Right. I agree with you there. But I love like the op- some of the opening to Casino Royale, the whole parkour scene and all. It's, that's yeah. a great chase. Holy crap. Yeah, the whole thing was just nonstop energy action yeah Which, you know and i can appreciate that I would but agree. yeah it, it was missing the some of the the cheesier kind of stuff but, but we'll I, see I, see what I the still next say it's is. a good movie i mean it's a good enjoyable movie it's not one you're going to pop in a lot it is one you're more likely to go i really want to see that scene or I want to see that clip where they, they flip the Aston Martin and set the fucking world's record for flipping a car in a movie <laughs> like that. Because that's a, that's a cool scene. That's a cool stunt. But, see, you know, Yankee, all... that's what I like about Daniel Craig. The deadpan. I mean, well, I can be that way, too. So Yeah. I, it's, guess. I look at James Bond the same way I look at the Joker. Everyone brings a different take to it, and I love that. I Well, I grew up on Doctor Who, so I'm used to different actors portraying the same person well and i and james bond i grew up on doctor who and james bond shifting i had to get used to because roger moore was the first james bond that i saw i had to get used to sean connery's james bond i had to get used to peter davison's doctor who after watching tom baker's doctor who forever which was so very different someone please tell disney it's okay to recast a character you don't have yes. to hate them or anything. Just fucking recast them. It's okay. Yes, yes. That rain is legit. Okay. Um, so what do you up? give it? Oh, yeah. Good call. Kathy, what do you rate it? Uh, zero. Space herpes. Fucking loved it. Cool. Awesome. Um, I'm going to go with something that I watched because I was like, um, I'm sitting here and I'm just going to watch something stupid, a little brain dead because I had to read some stuff. And so I started watching on Disney Plus the new Mighty Ducks TV show. Um, it's, I can't remember, it's the Mighty Ducks something or other. And it is it's a, on the front page. Do what? When you load up Disney Plus, it's on the fucking front page. Yeah, yeah, you can't miss it. I, I just, it's Mighty Ducks something. Um. And it is, it's your same trope of what Mighty Ducks supposed to be. A group of people that don't know how to play hockey, trying to make their own team, to try to make it where it's fun, so on and so forth. Um, and it, it's not bad. It's what you expect from a Mighty Ducks TV show. Corny little lines, you know, kids trying to be better than what they are. And so on and so forth. I'm glad that they, you know, got Gordon Bombay in it. And he's yeah, yeah, playing his role. Um, and there's some other stuff. So it was, it's nice. It's, it's good. Um, I, I like it. it. It's, it's good family TV type thing. You can sit and watch it with the family. Um, it's got your standard, you know, Mighty Ducks premise and everything. Um, it's, it's not bad. I would say if you're a family, you're going to love it. As an adult, if you like the Mighty Ducks movies, you'll like this. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I can give it one space herpes because it's just, you know, it's just, it's there. But it's a show that I doubt will get renewed for another season. So, I'm going to enjoy it while it's here. Fair enough. Well, I mean, honestly, the seasons can go away. Is They could just be like, we're done for now. We're going to make another one if we want to. When we feel the need, we'll make another series. I mean, that's the way I think TV's going to go. Oh, yeah. You know, non-network TV. And even they're going to have to change because, I mean, networks don't matter much anymore. Yeah, I mean, I subscribed. I have a, a website that I go to called can- ismyshowcanceled.com. And it goes out and says what shows were canceled or renewed and all this stuff. 
and everything. And it's kind of interesting to see it because, you know, like, oh, well, yeah, I figured that would get canceled. Why the hell is it, this renewed? It's, it's like a bigger version of Is Abe Vigoda Dead? <laughs> um, but I mean, because it also like lets you know about new TV shows coming out and everything, too. So, um, but I, I would not be surprised if after the first season it just, you know, doesn't get renewed just because that's kind of how TV is nowadays. Fair enough. So my first one is I was trying to figure out what to watch on uh, last night. And I was hemming and hawing over stuff. And then I noticed that Dread is back on uh, Amazon Prime. So I'm like, I'll fire that up. That's a good quick movie. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see it is the extended edition of Dread, which I had not seen before. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's not very long to begin with, so I'm surprised they added scenes back. You know, it's a bunch of connective tissue scenes that actually make the movie significantly stronger. Lots of little interactions with characters, scenes that you felt were really short and maybe you probably didn't have time to think they were odd because of the pace that movie move, moves at. But when you see the extended, you're like, oh, that was a kind of odd scene in the original. Now that I have time to think about it. And this is great. It is significantly an upgrade. I don't know how many minutes are extra because the movie's only like an hour and 38 long. I mean, this movie is just like, we're telling a story. We're not going to need to be any longer than we have to. And I think that's the better version. So Amazon Prime, check it out. Of course, it's awesome. Carl Urban, like, does, like, this part of Carl Urban that you can see is great. He acts the fuck out of this part of his face. <laughs> Never takes off the helmet, which is great. Uh, Olivia Trilby, who's the... Uh, Anderson is great in it also. He has a couple extra little scenes that make her an even better character, a little more insight into her. It, it's just a great movie. Like, it is really too bad we didn't get a sequel of any kind. They're still theoretically working on a Dread Netflix series or something. Which yeah, would be cool. Something's supposed to be coming up. I don't know what it was, though. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It's straight up zero. I mean, the original was zero. It's better with less with the extra scenes bad again so it is you know double zero um oh god before, before we let you go again gonzo yankee papa bravo brought up the snyder kind of justice league <laughs> I, I saw that and i was just waiting for you to like hold on so we saw Time that out. gonzo and i have both seen that and i will not be watching it because Nor i don't care you. so technically speaking it is a better movie than the theatrical version with one giant flaw. It's four hours fucking long. <laughs> it is a death knell for a movie. He can say that, and also I want to point out, like he says this is his original artistic vision. Maybe, maybe the studio stopped him from filming some scenes, but they poured a lot of money into a movie that was supposed to be just the director's cut with a lot of things fixed that I don't think would have been fixed if they hadn't gotten the uh, hadn't gotten the extra money. Um, to do. No, I don't feel like it's enough for two movies. I, I feel like you're right; it's too much for one movie. Uh, I feel like as a it's, I can go to tired on what's wrong with this movie. Um, it's mediocre. Uh, I would rewatch the original Justice League first, even though I think it is overall uh, aside from how it handles the big three, uh, that would be Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Not sure. Um, Sandra Fuller, why do you hate me? Why? <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, the big three. The handling of the big three is better in Joss Whedon's. He understands those three. The problem is he doesn't care about the rest of them. And that's a mistake. Uh, and, I mean, the script writer said it, which is fair. There's an article on him online. I forget what it's on. But if you can find that, check it out. It's a great read. But... It's, a, it's just a flawed movie. It's never going to be great. Um, I hope that even though people are clamoring for Bring Back the Snyderverse, fuck, I hope they don't because that like nightmare apocalypse scene is fucking terrible. And I will say, Zack Snyder does not fucking understand Superman. Zack Snyder should not be allowed to touch Superman ever again. <laughs> There's plenty of movies he could make that I think he would do a great job with. Uh, you know, the more I think about it, I think Watchmen is totally underrated. I think he did about as good of a job as anyone could have done on that movie. Because that is... Uh... So, 
Now, injustice is a thing that happened, but people who made injustice were going like, this is a total what if. You can't make that your main movie mythology when you're starting out. Because I guarantee you, if you kill Lois Lane, Superman is not going to snap and join Darkseid. That's not going to fucking happen. That's not Superman. The fact of that betrays everything Superman stands for. So it's fine for this weird alternate universe, like, what the fuck happened? I don't know, Superman's an app, join Darkseid, but doesn't fit in any sort of real timeline, which is what he's going to try and do. And there's no redeeming somebody from that bullshit. You've stuck with bullshit time, time travel, which he did in this one, kind of, and you don't want to be stuck in that. So it's a flawed movie. Uh, what do we give it, like three-ish, Gonzo? Two and a half, three-ish? Yeah, and mostly it was for just way too long, way too, you know, just drug way on. Long. Like, aside from the opening scene with The Flash, everything with The Flash is so much better than the original. Cyborg is so much better in this. It is great. Yeah. Aquaman exists. Um, I hate how they gave Mera a British accent. That was stupid. Why did you change the accent when the Aquaman movie has come out and she doesn't have a fucking British accent? Yeah. Anyways. Um, Gonzo, we'll go to your next one before I rant some more about uh, the Snyder Cut. Okay, we'll go about something a little bit lighthearted. Um, it's on Netflix, uh, just came out and I saw it and I was like, yeah, I need to do some more work. So I'm going to watch this and we ran, we talked about it and it is a very stupid, but fun and great movie. And it is mystery men. Um, Oh yeah. This movie knows exactly what it's supposed to be. Yeah. It knows that it's not supposed to be serious. It's not supposed to take itself serious. It's not supposed to be the new superhero movie of the world. It kind of pokes fun at all the superhero stuff. And it is hilariously bad, but good at the same time. Because it's... It, the actors know what, they're, what movie they're making, and yes. they play for that. Because you could have easily had people poke fun at themselves and ruin the movie, but not one of them. Not one of them did. Yeah. It, um... I'm sitting there I watching it. I love that. Yeah. You're, you're watching it, and you're just, you're just waiting, and you're just like, yep, yep, yep. This is, you know... And, and it's, like I said... They know what they're making. They're not making the the next superhero when they, this came out because it's actually twenty one years old. I think is what it is. Let's make y'all feel old for a second. That's pretty old. Yeah. Um. But I mean, you can tell that when they were making this, that they're like, this isn't gonna be. We're not gonna be making a Mystery Men two or this new franchise of superhero stuff. No. They were like, we're gonna make a silly, ridiculous superhero movie with superheroes that don't actually have superpowers. Well, I mean, <laughs> come on, Gonzo. When this came out, the damn superhero franchises were Superman, which at that point was fucking dead. Yeah. Batman, which was on fucking life support. And the Captain America made for TV movies, which were fuck awful. Yeah. <laughs> don't look them up, please. Hey, please. Invisible Boy had a superpower. Yes, there was very few people that actually did have a superpower. Um, the bowler's bowling ball, of course, was you know supernatural or you know a super. What about the spleen? That's the, spleen? the superpower. <laughs> I know, I have it. That is a superpower. Yeah, but I mean, for for the most part, they were just random people I that mean, wanted to do good in the world. The Sphinx did cut guns in hand may half with his mind. Yeah, like I said, there was a lot of them. There was just <laughs> weird stuff. Mysterious. Yes, and all his quotes. If you don't master your rage, your rage will be your master. <laughs> yeah, and you can balance. I need to that rewatch and that. Head, you can head off your foes with a balanced attack. <laughs> and why am I wearing the watermelons on my feet? I don't remember telling you to do that. Yes, and this that's thing. Is, is it was fucking new? awesome. Yeah, it knew it's... what it was being. It knew it was going to be a stupid comedy with superheroes doing silly things. And yes, Legion, that soundtrack. Well, Andrew, you do need to see that shit. movie. Yeah, that, that soundtrack's really good too. It is. And yeah, the soundtrack. But even like, uh, deleted scenes that I don't think that's what I need to be in the movie, but they're fun to watch. The one is the Mystery Man Oath, which is on the soundtrack, which is you know a conversation between the Shoveler and uh, Mister Furious that is hilarious. Uh, that never gets in a regular movie. It didn't need to be, but it's a fun to watch. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely a lot of fun. It's silly. It's stupid. Some of the jokes are inappropriate for Tay. Um, but like I said, it's 20 plus years old. So, you know, I, I don't fault it for that. Um, 
I give it probably like one and a half type thing. But I mean, it was still a fun ride. It's not bad. It was just, you know, it's there and it knows what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, my next one is uh, Banyan and I rewatched the first episode of The Mandalorian because we had time because we got done watching uh, Winter Soldier, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, and our food still hadn't fucking arrived. So <laughs> we watched that, and uh, I mean, man, it's really good. And actually, you can see some extra stuff. But uh, the biggest takeaway is, man, I would have watched it, watched a whole series of IG Eleven and Mando just fulfilling bounties. Oh, hell watch yes. that. Watch the hell out of that. Oh yeah. I, mean, I love where it went, but I would have watched that series. I don't think it would have been, quote unquote, the savior of Star Wars, but it still would have been pretty good. Yeah, I would have. Maybe. I would have watched a Mando and IG TV series, them going out and doing a bunch of bounties and stuff because it was really good. Yeah. I enjoyed uh, the crap out of that. Zero, still zero. It's great. Um, you can see little bits of things that they placed early to understand why he does what he does. Um, so it's so great. Um, guys, I think we, we have one more to talk about. We don't have much time. Yeah. Uh, we got, uh, the Falcon and winter soldier. Uh, the new episode right, came out. Free. Um, let's just say that it was great. I loved it. It was good. Um, Baron Zemo is still the shit. Um, it's <laughs> still good. Um, the characters are still there. You're, they're still world building. Which is even better, um, and what Captain America does at the end, I even went fuck yes because I know where this character is going, and while the character what the character did was a, a completely wrong, they uh, are doing. I'm not gonna say that actually. Well, I will count that what he did was egregious, but not totally wrong. Correct. That's what I'm saying. It is outside the character of um, Captain America. Of character, yes, yes but not of John. Yeah, no, out of he, he is playing what he's supposed to be playing right. He is not. And honestly, from a comic standpoint, it's also very right too. I love where it's going. Um, you know, I was reading Captain America in the John Walker era, and I agree with where it's going. It's great. Yeah, I think they're. You know, we only have six episodes in this series, and so they kind of have to kind of fast track a little stuff. The next one apparently is over an hour long. So yeah. They're, I think they didn't have quite enough material for seven, so they decided to make it six with one super long or two super long, maybe. Yeah, but I mean, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I could watch, yeah. I could watch a Baron Zemo, you know, TV show. We we joke that that Facebook meme of totally trust Baron Zemo more than John Walker. Yeah, but I do. Yeah, I really do. I, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I trust that guy more. Sorry. Yeah. It, um. I, I do feel like the special guest stars of this episode, I know why they were there and they were necessary for the plot. I wish they could have done that better because it was a little off. Um, Let's just say I don't think it would have happened that way. I like the Wakanda show up. Uh, It fits. World builds. Yeah. There was uh, there. They being in this is appropriate for the series. It, it is a purpose of the series, but I do feel like what they did was out of line. Uh, I think what happened, I think what they did is it was building the story of Walker. Oh, yeah. I know why they did it, and I don't disagree with it. I just feel like maybe off screen there's going to be some fallout. Maybe on screen there'll be some fallout. There should be some fallout from that. Oh, yeah. I don't think uh, whoever's in charge of Wakanda right now, because I you know they're not going to keep it. You know, they're, they're going to retire Chad McBoson's character out of respect, which I approve of waiting to see what that ends up being. That was uh, Zima. Yeah, and it's not uh, only one M. And no, it's, he's not named after that. No. <laughs> he's named after his father. But, Anyways, uh, super cool. Looking forward to the next episode. Zero. Yeah, zero for Even me. With, <laughs> no, I just went on a tirade about things since it's not necessarily perfect. It's still zero. Yeah, it, it's, it's still good, solid TV. It keeps me going. Um, I'm not bored. Uh, the characters are really good. World building is good and fleshing. Um, the terrorist, I put quotes around it. Terrorist. I love what they did with the flag smashers because yeah. flag smasher was a guy who sort of had that a goal, but he was way more clearly a villain. I like the slight ambiguity of this, though. 
after episode three, there should no be, be no ambiguity because she crossed the line. And I love Sam and her talk. It's great. Yes. That Absolutely was a really great. good scene of them two talking. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, oh, Yankee Papa Bravo. I am not looking forward to the Bad Batch because I haven't finished Clone Wars yet. It has sapped my will to live <laughs> watching the first four seasons. So I put it on hold. I'll try to watch some episodes, maybe finish it off eventually. But uh, everyone uh, tells me the Bad Batch is good, so I'm kind of looking forward to it being there. There was a, uh, by the way, there was a new Loki trailer that came out. Yeah. Uh, I'm it's looking fine. forward to it. Looks like it's going to be a good fun ride. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm more interested to see how it goes. I love Owen Wilson for the most part. <laughs> and Loki is great, so I'm, I'm interested to see what, what they do with it. I wasn't looking forward to it like Falcon Winter Soldier, and the way Falcon Winter Soldier has turned out, I think it's going to have hell of some shoes to, to fill. It is. Uh, I, I like but I don't think the we trailer. should expect that from it. Yeah, I expect it's just going to be a good fun ride and Loki doing a lot of stuff that's just... Yeah, it's sort of disconnected from everything else because yeah. of the way it comes down. That would be interesting. Yeah, but I, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But that's not until, what, June? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because we have I, a break. I, I love what Disney Plus is doing. Disney Plus clearly worth the money every month. Yeah. I know clearly. some people were giving Disney Plus shit for not bringing out the entire season at once. And I'm like, no, no there's a reason why they got to keep you around. It gives me something to look forward to. I like the weekly view, a weekly episodes. It's great. Because some people, you can wait. You can watch something else. And you can wait, and then you can binge it all at once. Yeah, it, it's nice I to look forward to a Friday. Episode a week, episode a day. Just give me some schedule. I, can lo I love that. I'm not. I never have the time anymore to just sit down and binge stuff. Um, the only time I ever did a lot of binging was rewatching Battlestar Galactica. Or sorry, watching for the first time Battlestar Galactica on DVD because I hadn't been able to keep up and episodes are cliffhangers. I love being able to go, nope, watch the next fucking episode. <laughs> but sometimes that tantalization of the cliffhanger is so good. Especially if you got some people to talk about it with. You hear whatever I talk about. Like that discussion, like water, tool, water cooler style of discussion is great. Uh, yeah, Babylon 5 is streaming now on HBO Max. Uh, I... Watch it. Uh, I had that on my queue. I started watching, I guess, episode zero, and I had to stop it because I also started watching um, the last season, quote, last season of Expanse, uh, and I just couldn't get into it because I wasn't into the seriousness of that right now. And then, of course, some other things came up. But Babylon 5, since I've never actually seen it, never watched it through, through completion, only episodes here and there, I'm looking forward to that. Just keep in mind... Episode zero, The Gathering, is a pilot. Correct. Things change a little bit with the first episode, and the first season is a first season. Yes. But you've got to pay attention to the first season, or that shit will bite you in the ass. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm probably going to skip, because I started watching episode zero, and I was like, oh. oh watch it. Is it? Did, should, gotta, I, should I? Yeah, okay. you, it'll bite you in the ass. You, okay. Babylon 5 is the one series you can't fucking sleep on an episode. That's like the series that invented the story arc. Yeah, well, I'm so it's, literally was like, oh no, you can't sleep on my shit. You missed something then, and <laughs> everything is well thought out in it. Every detail matters. So actually, Legionnaires, you don't need to if you've seen it um, or whatever. There's old Usenet uh, uh, files of Straczynski talking on you because he was a big internet guy before the internet was big. Where uh, when I did my rewatch, I watched an episode and then I would read the uh, look, the lurkers guy that he was on and listen to his comments to people. It's so interesting to get so much insight. It it's ne it's like having director's commentary for the episodes, <laughs> but you don't have to change the episode. You just watch the episode and then read that and like, oh cool. That's there are cool. some nights I literally would watch an episode, read it, go back watch an episode and read it again. Read the next next uh, episode. If you want Gonzo, I can link you that. I think I still have it somewhere. Remind me if you. Want. Yeah, yeah, Lurker's Guide to Babylon 5. Um, I guess I should find it now if I have it, shouldn't I? Let's take a look. It was deep. It was uh, it was deep in a way that I didn't expect it to be deep for the most part. There, yes, were a few parts where it, it, it veered into a little bit of cheesiness. but <laughs> So keep in mind, this is all texty stuff, but there's the link. Everyone wants to go to Lurker's Guide to... Uh, basically, after it, it, it literally tells you 
his thoughts, him answering basically viewer questions. Yeah. It really is, Andrew. There's a lot of political intrigue in it's, it. And that's something that is interesting to some people. It was interesting to me. There are other people that that don't like something like they don't like something that's quite that deep. I also say that it is the reason Babylon, uh, reason that Deep Space Nine ended up the way it is. Not that they stole Deep Space Nine idea from that. I'm not going to say they did that. They probably did, though. I'm not going to say that for sure they did. But the turning episodic into serial where you can't miss an episode, they literally went, oh, shit, look, Babylon 5 is there in the same time. They're doing this shit. We need to do that shit, too. And uh -huh. that is why Deep Space Nine is such good sci-fi, even if, as I say, it is terrible Star Trek. And the same thing, yeah, the actors, God. They skip, like, all, like, you'll be like, that guy, what was that guy on? I already did it with, like, episode zero. I was like, oh, who's this person? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that person. In the first season, it's they... It's Bobby stuff. from Taxi. <laughs> yes, it is, Bobby from Taxi. I kept yeah. calling him Kanicki. Uh Season two or three for him, though. And, I mean, like, literally, look at everyone. They got uh, Michael Silva from, he played in the original uh, Buck Rogers as a... Uh, uh, the Draconis Commander guy, I forget his name, Kane, I think it was. Oh, yeah. They're, they just keep bringing people in. I mean, so good. And the character Billy build, Moomy. Billy Moomy from Lost Billy and Moomy, Made. yeah. Awesome. And literally, I'll tell you what, Gonzo. Here'd be a good thing. After the first episode, when you meet a character that seems they're going to come back, write what you think about them. After you finish, you go back and read that. You will see they've changed and evolved. Yeah, Xander Vorlord, they, their track record for people passing away is terrible. It is it is tragic. Literally tragic. So many of them have passed. It's sad. Jakar was my favorite, I think. Oh, God, Jakar. Jakar and Londo. He was, he was my favorite. And I feel like he and Londo maybe were the people in that series that grew the most. Absolutely. No doubt. As characters. Did people. throw, too, but they grew, like, oh, my God. Yeah. it's so, I, uh, I love when... When a series, all the people are are getting their experiences and learning and growing and becoming different and not not just the same person over and over despite their experiences. When they end, they're all different people. In fact, I feel like if you have a series like Babylon 5 and at the end someone's the same person, that's the tragic character. <laughs> so good. But we're over time. Holy crap, I could go on for a whole night. <laughs> oh, I know. I was sitting there going, yeah. oh, I knew oh, I should have said something, but I was like, no, John's going to go. And I'm like, I'm just going to let him have it. <laughs> Oh, we Guys, love Babylon 5. Yeah, and like I said, I'll start watching more of it so I can get in more into it. Because, like I said, I missed it when it came out because I was so, you know, I was not able to have TV during that time. So Yeah, it's Legionnaire a definitely... Legionnaire says B5 uh, night. We could have a whole podcast where we're talking about <laughs> B5. It, it is a totally uh, missing piece in your sci-fi knowledge. I mean, you watched all of Stargate, for fuck's sake. Just dump that shit from your memory and get some B5 in there. <laughs> well, guys... <laughs> That is the end of the podcast. We really appreciate y'all listening and watching and everything. Uh, don't forget on Monday, John will be streaming MechWarrior Online. Tuesday Hopefully. through <laughs> Thursday, uh, Kathy will be painting, uh, working on miniatures. Kathy, you going to work on anything particular this week? I will be finishing up that Reaper uh, uh, Cyberist. I can never remember the name. It's like... It's like six words long, and <laughs> I just know that she's Scarlet the Cyberist, I think. They don't call it, like, cyberpunk, but it's it's a 75-millimeter cyberpunk model, and it's a really cool model, and I've been having a lot of fun painting that. So I'm hoping to finish that up, and if I do, then probably get back to painting my busts with oil paints. And then, of course, Friday... Friday is Pulp Fiction Pulp Friday. Fiction. We finished the last Conan last uh, two days ago, and we started a new one. So. I have a Conan book somewhere. I need to put it in a box and mail it to you when I mail other stuff to you. <laughs> I'm or gonna... just tell me what it is, and I can... See if she has Project Gutenberg has, has all this open source... Uh, old old stories online for for free to download in a whole bunch of different formats but wouldn't you want like the physical copy in your hand that would be fun but it's easier for me to read off of oh, a backlit something 
Right. Yeah, I, I feel <laughs> that with the eyes. Um, yeah, I, I might have actually given it one of our uh, one of the people who works at Mission Barbecue, Meg, who we love, uh, wants to have the hugest library she can. So she takes any. I'm like, instead of getting rid of books, I'm like, here, and she takes some ads into her library. So it's cool. Uh, and hopefully, Mech Warrior Monday Legionnaires is going to hopefully have voice comms so I can start teaching him some arts to play. So uh, there's a good chance that tomorrow will be beginner night. So if you want to uh, learn about Mech Warrior Online, or I mean, anytime you learn about Mech Warrior Online, let me know and I will pop you on, jump you in, and we will teach you what we can about Mech Warrior Online. I'm not the greatest, but as a small things, I'm much better with the theory than I am the actual performance of it. Guys, please take care of yourself. Please be safe. Wash your hands. Um, wear your mask. Come back. Come back and see us. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate it. For more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Kathy. We are going to send y'all out to the Pyro Club. Make sure you raid them. Send some emotes. Tell okay. them hi and have them give them. I'm going to refresh when you get there so that way you can uh, give them proper credit for people they being there. And. Uh, then tell them, like, do exclamation point lurk if you're not going to interact, just so they know you're there and they can get the bonus credits for that. Sure. I'm going to go in get... at the end. <laughs> Perfect timing, just in time for the Pirate Club. Yay. Rip your floats. I'm going to rip your floats. Oh, rip your floats sounds amazing. <laughs>